Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So this video is video number three of my Cut Flower Grow Along series. I am a little late posting this video. I'm about a week behind on when I really should have gotten these started, but um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, a week is not too bad. Um, so anyway, I have seven seed varieties left to start in my Cut Flower series. Um, four of them I'm going to be starting today. The other three I will be direct sowing out when the temperatures get warm enough. So Xenias, Cosmos, and Sunflowers I will be direct sowing out in the ground, usually the end of May when I know we are not going to have any more frost. So once that time comes, I will do a video on how I direct sow those outside. But I have four varieties that I'm starting today. Uh, the first one is the Celosia, the Pompous Plume Mix. Then I have the Cherokee Sunset Rubecchia. I have the QAS Purple Gumfrina, and I have the Status Seeker Blue. So I thought I would just go through my entire process of seed starting these four varieties with you guys. I'm gonna use a 72 cell tray, and just to keep all of my grow along seedlings organized, I'm gonna do all four varieties right in this tray. Um, now I don't have it filled with my soil yet. I thought I would show you guys that as well. Um, the soil that I'm using this year, actually I think it's a soilless, um, the seed starting mix I should say that I'm using this year is a pro mix and it comes in a compressed bale. Um, I have been really, really happy with it so far. I ordered it from Greenhouse Mega Store. Um, I, I've been really happy with it so far this year and I will probably end up using it again next year. So the first thing that I need to do is pre-moisten the soil. So I just have a watering can here. I'm gonna pour a whole bunch of water in here because when the soil comes, it is really, really dry. And you always wanna make sure to pre-moisten your seed starting mix so that your seedlings have less of a chance of drying out. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's actually dust rising as I stir this. If I was doing a huge quantity of this right now, I would probably put a mask on just because you don't wanna breathe a lot of it. But for this little bit, I won't worry about it. Okay. So all of my soil is moistened and the consistency that I like is when you, whoop, And the consistency that I like is when you squeeze it, I have a little bit of water coming out, but not much, and see how it's holding in a shape in my hand. That is going to sit in these seed trays really nice. And I just like to stir it in a big um, plastic container because it keeps it all contained. I'm gonna kind of shift the soil to this side, put the end in there, and I'm just gonna start filling my tray. Then once I get half of it about full, I'm gonna come in and just kind of press it down in the cells. And then I go over it again. You wanna make sure all the soil is in there so you don't have um, any big gaps where things can settle a lot. All right, brush it off. Then I'm gonna flip it the other way. Okay, so my tray is full. I'm gonna set the soil aside, rinse my hands, and we'll get started. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is label my cells where the different varieties of seeds are going. So I just use these little white plastic garden tags and I always use a garden marker. This will not fade in the sun or when water hits it like a Sharpie will. So it's really nice to be able to have one of these. So I'm just gonna write the name on the variety and then put this in on the rows that I wanna sew. Okay. 
Okay, now you'll notice that I did not space these out evenly. Gomfrina is something that I like to grow a little bit of each year because I do like it for dried flowers, but I don't need a ton, so I'm just gonna be doing one row of that. The next is a Cherokee Sunset. I'm gonna do five rows of that. Rubecchia is a perennial in my area, so any perennials that I can stock up on that will come back every year that I can use for bouquets is a plus. Then I'm gonna just do two rows of the Pompous Plume Mix because I already have a ton of other Celosia started, and I have four rows of Status. I can never have enough Status, especially this blue, so I'm gonna do four rows of that. So before I put the seeds in, I do like to kind of lightly smooth out the soil. Now, all of these seeds um, do require light to germinate. So it says you want to barely cover the seeds. So you can either do that with a fine vermiculite, which I do sometimes, I don't have my vermiculite, of course, here with me today, it's at home. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the dry pro mix that I have not pre-moistened. And I'm gonna just sprinkle that over top of this when I'm done, just kind of to hold the seed in place. But then we'll mist it down and that way light can still get to the seed. So the first thing I'm gonna sow is this um, QIS Purple Gomfrina. And I think for all of these, I'm gonna do two seeds per cell because we all know that germination is not always 100%. Gumfrina seeds are pretty big in size and so it's gonna be really easy to just set these right in my tray. And I will zoom in on the next variety for you guys. So I'm just putting both of the seeds right in the center of the cell because then I will be thinning this out so there is just one plant per cell. I'm not gonna worry about dividing these and transplanting them. Um, it's a little too late in the season for that. And honestly, I have so many plants that I'll thin these. And if I have one in each cell, that's gonna be perfect. All right, let me move the camera closer and that way you can see how I place the rest of the seeds. So next is the Cherokee Sunset, which are these cells right here. This was one of my favorite varieties of Rebecca last year because it had really dark colors for fall but it also had a lot of doubles. And I love to have double Rebecca. Now these seeds, as you can see, are a lot smaller than Gomfrina, um, but not quite as small as some of the others. So actually you probably won't even be able to see where I drop these, but I'm grabbing two seeds and putting them right in the center of the cell. Some cells might be getting three seeds, but that's okay. Because like I said, I'm gonna be thinning these out later. All right, next is my Pompous Plume Celosia. Celosia are little round um, black seeds. These are pretty easy to place. But again, they're probably so small that you guys can't even see where I'm landing these. Okay, a few seeds left of this, so I'm just gonna put these back in the bag. And the last variety is the Seeker Blue Status. And I just realized I had my water can sitting here the whole time. So hopefully that wasn't blocking a view or anything for you guys. Status seeds are long and black, so these are gonna be a little bit easier to see when I put them on top of the soil. And I'm gonna drop two seeds per cell again. Status always goes really quick because they're kind of a long seed, so they're easy to grab and just drop on top. Status was one of my favorite filler flowers last year, and it also dries really well. I'm talking when you when something dries really well, status looks about exactly the same, which is just so amazing. I have a few seeds left. I'm gonna hold on to those. Now I'm gonna grab my Pro Mix so that I can sprinkle that right on the top. Okay, so this is the Pro Mix. Again, it's dry. I just wanna make sure that it is all um, kind of finely broken apart 
And literally, I'm just gonna lightly like drizzle it on the top. And this is just kind of to hold those seeds in place. You don't wanna cover it totally because they do need light to germinate. Some soils say not to, or some seeds say not to cover at all. You just set on the top of the soil. But all of these said to very lightly cover. So that's what I'm gonna do. And again, you can use vermiculite for this. Um, vermiculite also helps um, like the moisture level in the soil to prevent algae growth. I'm really late in the season on doing these and so I'll be fine with just the soil. I don't think I need to add vermiculite to this. All right, time to mist them in. All right, this mister has been absolutely wonderful to use this year. I purchased it from Amazon and I have all the, um, products linked below in the description that I get for Amazon, including these garden markers. Um, but this mister has just been awesome. It's just a pump mister and it has a continuous spray. So it's just really easy to mist in your seeds. So I'm just gonna lightly spray these basically to wet all of the pro mix that I put on top of here. That's gonna settle the seed into the soil, get it to start germinating. Just gonna wet the whole tray. Okay, now I'll put a humidity dome on the top and these are going to go under my grow lights because it does need light to germinate so I wanna be able to put it under the grow light immediately. That way that helps the seeds get going and then these are also going to go on a heat mat. Once I see that the entire tray has almost germinated, I will turn the heat mat off, but keep it under the grow lights. And these will remain under my grow lights until they get planted outside. Now, typically about a week to 10 days before these get planted outside, I start hardening them off. And that basically means you're acclimating them to the outside temperatures. So I'll put them out for a couple of hours, bring them back in. The next day, maybe three hours. I'll lengthen the time outdoors every day until they will sit in their seed trays overnight outdoors. And that gets them used to the temperatures, um, the fluctuation in temperatures and the wind. And that way they don't go into shock when they get planted out in the ground. Um, but these should start really fast right indoors here and get going for my cut flower growing season. As far as watering, once these get going, I will be bottom watering, which basically what you do is you kind of lift up your tray, pour the water in onto the bottom tray, and then they will absorb the water from the bottom. So it's all pretty easy. So that's gonna do it for this video. Stay tuned for a lot more cut flowers this season. I'm getting ready to put my hoop house up. Uh, I have tulips coming up, daffodils coming up. There's so much going on and in the near future, I do have some more exciting news to share, so stay tuned for that. So I hope you guys are all having a good day, and we will see you soon.